John Blackburn is a consultant in the field of defence and national security. He's a fellow of the Royal Society of New South Wales, the Institute for Regional Security, the Sir Richard Williams Foundation and the Australian Institute of Energy. John has extensive experience across the fields of strategy, policy, planning, operational command, capability development and material acquisition. Speaking of material, a lovely coat he's wearing right now, rivaling Alan Jones, I would think. Uh, John, well, <laughs> welcome to uh, welcome to your nightmare. <laughs> so good morning. Thank you for that, Mike. Very dapper indeed. Look, uh, what isn't dapper, as we, we would say in Australia, is the challenging state of politics and, for want of a better word, governance in Australia. What are your thoughts? I think we are going through some very difficult times and what that's doing is exposing the cracks or weaknesses in our system. And so whilst we're in the middle of a crisis, we're going to have to clearly support the political leaders we've elected to get through the crisis. But let's have a look at this and say, is there something we can learn from this? Because it's not in a good state. We've got to do things differently in the future uh, and we're going to have to I guess, see how we're better prepared for these types of crises in the future. Is the environment for good governance and policy making and healthy at all levels of government at the moment, from say, uh, local, state and, uh, and federal? From the people I speak to <clears throat> in the local government levels, the answer there is no. Again, they're pretty much overwhelmed. And I think in the state to federal levels, we've got a really interesting problem. What the crisis is showing to us is that the federation structure and the governance systems and how the politics works was okay perhaps for most of the last hundred years, but it's not fit for purpose for the world we live in today. And it's certainly not gonna be fit for purpose when you think about the range of challenge and crisis we might have to address in the next couple of decades. So things aren't gonna get any simpler. Our system needs to be revisited. In what way would you change it to make it uh, more, more relevant? I think the way we have to look at it is understand how we got here. So if you look at the past, couple of decades. There is a lot of things written about the brave economic policy, the leadership shown by both sides of politics, uh, and that's for the Hawke, Keating and Howard governments. And what they did beyond the short-term politics to set us up to be a strong, resilient economy got us through the GFC. But the last decade, something has shifted. You've gone from that long-term focus to a real short-term focus, minimal thinking about how do I prepare for something beyond the next election. I would say for both sides of politics, we've seen a lot of internal <clears throat> focus. We've got all these leadership changes and a growing trust deficit. Uh, whilst we've seen what the ICACs at the state level are producing, the lack of a federal ICAC makes it very hard to have trust, particularly when you see significant examples of dishonesty, marketing and lack of ethics. So <clears throat> when you look at the journey to where we are, we now find ourselves in this period of crisis and a compounding crisis, not just one, the pandemic, the emerging economic crisis, which will not go away, I think, for the next few years. The possibility of concurrent events where we're going to have both a pandemic um, and bushfires or mm. yeah, natural disasters. And top of that, we've got a looming regional security and trade crisis, particularly with the emergence of China, its behavior, the interaction with the, between the US. All of those combined together are really giving us probably the most complicated situation we've had in our lifetimes. But when you have a look at it, and the pandemic's a really good example, it is not a black swan event. It's not something that wasn't predicted. It was predicted. It wasn't a matter of if it was going to happen, but when. And today we're still saying, oh, look, this is a one in a hundred year in event, so could relax after this. No, there's nothing scientifically that's going to say you couldn't have another pandemic of a different time next year. What happens when we uh, start having bushfires, and we are, we're going to have bushfires, that's going to, going to happen. We have COVID and they're having trouble with COVID. If we have anything of the, uh, the size of the bushfires from last season, I mean, how are they going to cope? I mean, they're not coping now. Well, you've seen the Americans are having a problem doing this. Um, the idea that we'll just evacuate everybody to some area, if we've got a COVID outbreak, that's not going to work properly. The idea that in the past that, you know, firefighters from other states or overseas will just be flown in to help us. There's a serious problems. We're seeing the Americans deal with that today. When you come back to saying, well, why is it <clears throat> happening this way? Well, I think we're pretty good at reacting to crisis, but we're no good at preparing for them. And this is a bit of a difference on how the military works. Yes, they've got the assets to do it, but they spend a lot of time in what's called preparedness. 
what are those parts of my force capability that I have at a certain readiness level and how am I going to sustain them? So there's a lot of work that defense does and it's training and thinking and planning that's not just about managing today or a near term, it's preparing. We need to take a little bit of that into the way our civil society works. Because I think what we're seeing is a lack of crisis management training and expertise, a lack of forward planning, a lack of preparation. Look at our supply chains. You couldn't say there was any preparation at all in our medicine or PPE supply chains. And that's why we're seeing the problems. But it's not just medicines. We are so import dependent on so many things, we haven't thought through what happens if those supply chains get interrupted. Do you think um, there's a case um, that they hand this over to the military or give them a greater say in what happens and control on what happens? I think the model, particularly in a, a natural disaster or crisis like this, that defence sits there, waits to be called, and then it carries suitcases or guards, hotels. <sighs> This is a mad way of using a defence force. However, I would not in any way advocate that the defence organisation should be put in charge of any aspect. Because if you think about it, let's just think about the economy and business, which is fundamental, and we think about security where defence is. Every decision the politicians have to make is a trade-off. Defence can understand operations and crisis and forward planning, but has frankly zero understanding of business. Business and economists understand that side, but most of the ones I've met in that space have no understanding of security. So what you do, you have to make some very difficult trade-off decisions. In my view, because of the last 30 years of economic prosperity, all our major decisions have been purely through an economic lens without understanding the security or the crisis implication. Mm. So really, it's a job for the politicians to do it. But here's the other thing. Our federation is what it is. But if you can get the governance of how we make it work, there's the big problem. The lunacy of what's happening now with states inwards fixation and a lack of understanding how people actually live and work. Think about Albury Wodonga. I was told that the hospital there, which is split on campuses in Wodonga and Albury, is actually one hospital to service the community and the surrounding areas. They don't live and work with a line down the river that says you can't cross it sometimes. So. When you get states going, whoops, we'll have a crisis, I'm going to clamp the border down, that's not how we live and work. You need to think about it in zones, how people do work, what the community support services are. So that's one example. And I've got to tell you, I think the dumbest thing I've heard in the last six months in this country, not America, is that Queensland hospitals are for Queenslanders. I mean, you look at this going, OK, I understand where the federations come from and the state roles and responsibilities. But to get a states working as a team need to think about how their people, Australians, live and work and make plans on how you manage that, which is by zone, not by a line called a border. What's happened to evidence-based policy, transparency and transmission of facts to the public seems to be lacking? Well, one of the things that we're doing in our National Resilience Project um, with the Institute I chair, AAA Australia, is we're looking at politics, governance, and part of that's looking at the role of the public service. Um, basically, I think since about Howard's time, there's been a shift away from the bureaucracy, the public service, helping formulate policy and doing a lot of, not independent, but you know, apolitical work. You can see, and it's been stated by the current prime minister, he wants the bureaucrats, the, you know, the, the public service, to give him information, not policy for advice. So who does the policy advice? Well, probably lobby groups and relatively inexperienced staffers in a lot of cases, not all, but a lot of cases. What we found in the work we've been doing in this resilience study is the knowledge, the information, the ideas of what to, to do are out there in society, in the expert areas. But somehow we stop that information and knowledge coming out because it's compartmented. Or if you're in a hospital, you can't really express your view without the media team approving it. If you're in a government department, you do exactly what the minister says, you don't give alternate ideas. So what we're not doing is we're not using the knowledge, experience and capability of Australians to solve these problems because our political system has compartmented it down and really driven it into a political near-term space instead of saying, hang on, we've got a big problem to face as Australians, let's work out how to do it. Do you see the situation changing much over, say, maybe 12, 24 months? Not in the short term, because once you're in a crisis, all you can do is react. And, and whilst I may not agree with what some of the people are doing, when you're in a crisis, it's like when you're in a military operation. 
you don't all sit around and have a debate about what the you know the, the the company commander or the brigadier is doing or the general whatever you get on and do the job what's important for us in this country is for us all australians let's not have the quiet australians all australians go hang on there have been a, a bunch of mistakes and things made that happens in a crisis let's face reality nothing is perfect but what could we do differently to be better prepared for the next crisis or the range of crises that are coming at us the world is getting more complex it's less secure and particularly when you see the politics of the us and the uk and europe you know our assumption that we have a big ally who will always protect us really needs to be questioned it's about australia saying hang on we need to use every part of our society its knowledge experience to together as a team work out what to do but that requires being honest and open about what the risks are so it's about us voters saying to both major political parties we're not happy the way you've been acting behaving in the last 10 years let's have a discussion about how we become more effective as a country mm. not as a collection of state and territories you got um, Dan Andrews, uh, the Berejiklian uh, government in New South Wales, uh, Palaszczuk uh, in Queensland, McGowan in WA, uh, Marshall is not too bad at the moment in South Australia. Uh, each one of these premiers, though, seem maybe not so much Gladys, but each one of the premiers seem to think this is their kingdom. They're, uh, they're, this is our new country called Victoria, Queensland or WA. Uh, and then you, to compound the problems in Queensland, we have an election happening and it doesn't really hold well for the quality of of politicians or people governing the states for the future of um, of each of these states and Australia. How do you see it? Well, for most of my life, I was a liberal voter and uh, yeah, military have generally been a little bit more conservative. But a couple of years ago, I said to my liberal politician friends, I said, there's something fundamentally wrong here. And I think both sides of politics really need to have a good hard look at themselves and understand that the way they're behaving and acting is too short term and it's party before nation. So at this stage of my life, you know, 64 years old, I'm going, hang on, I have to rethink that party, you know, loyalty I may have had years ago and said, no, 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 we have a fundamental problem in this country. And some of the decisions states have made you can understand what their motivation was, but I mean, when the Northern Territory goes and leases a critical port facility to a Chinese company, that's nuts. When Victoria goes and signs up to the BRI with the Chinese, this is a fundamental security international relationships role. There's some, we're, we're really getting off the planet here. We're Australians. We need to work as a team. Yes, the Federation structure is there. The governance and how we agree to work is what needs to make it work fit for purpose for today. But if you have a look at the politics right now, do you think you're going to get any state premier having full trust in the federal level of politics? And vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. So we've got to accept that we're off the rails, that we'll handle the crisis as best we can. And I think the early stages of the pandemic crisis, particularly the National Cabinet, were great. But that soon fell apart. Right now we're in election mode. Mm. We're going to have to muddle our way through this when the reality of the economic crisis hits us next year and the year after. We're going to have to say, look, we're going to have to change how we behave because we won't get through this and manage the next decade and leave a society fit for purpose for the next generations unless we act as Australians, not of a particular state or of a particular party. And that will only happen if enough Australians say, hey, we can see there's a big risk coming here and a big crisis. Let's face reality and get on and work as a team. You don't have every individual player go out on a football field. It doesn't work that way. They work as a team. John Blackburn, thank you very much. You're most welcome.